This past year, I took a bunch of Dynamics 365 data and I ingested it into Databricks. And I did it using Synapse Link. So I wanted to create a quick video to show you what I learned because the documentation was a little bit weird. It didn't really cover everything. And there's some quirks here that I thought you should be aware of and I wanted to cover it with you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Dynamics 365 Dataverse. We're gonna configure Synapse Link to use the correct Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage account. Um, Synapse Link can drop data in both Delta and CSV, and there's some differences there, so I wanted to show you that. Then we're gonna go into Databricks and create a schema over that data, and I'm gonna like share with you some of the ways that you can handle that data in code so you can see a little bit of code. That's what we're gonna to cover today. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Dataverse, and notice that I'm at powerapps.com, and I wanna create Synapse Link, so I click More and Discover All. And now here, um, you just have to scroll down a little bit and you can see Azure Synapse Link there and I click on that. And what you'll see here is that there are already two here. There we go. There are already two links here because I already did this. But let's pretend that I didn't. If I click new link, I get this little wizard here. I can connect to an Azure Synapse Analytics workspace if I want to but that is not required. That checkbox is not required. So if you choose an analytics workspace, a Synapse workspace, you're going directly into Synapse, which is fine. There's some reasons to do that, but not necessary. So instead, you choose your Azure subscription, and then you choose the resource group that you want to be in. And for me, um, I have one already, so I'll just choose that. And then you choose the storage account that you want, and you know, whichever storage account that you think is good. And then you click next and it runs through this process where it like configures um, the different components that it needs. It creates a folder in the, um, in the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage account uh, and it starts working. Now, there's a couple of weird things that you need to know. Um, one is you want your storage account to be in the same data center location as your Dynamics tenant. So if you're in East US in Dynamics, then you want to use East US in Azure. If you're in East US 2, then use East US 2 um, in Azure. That's the best way to do it. Another thing is it needs way too many permissions. So if you look at the documentation, the documentation would say you need blob storage contributor and you need like, um, Actually, I have it right here. Let me tell. Let me share with you. It, you need reader role access to the resource group and the storage account. You need Synapse administrator and storage blob data contributor. Well, we tried all that and we kept getting permission errors, permission errors. So finally, we had to track down somebody who had the Azure subscription administrator role, and we had to give ourselves the um, Dynamics 365 administrator role. And once we did that we bypassed all the security errors that we were getting. Then we went back and we, we didn't need the Azure subscription um, administrator role anymore. So um, once it was configured one time, we could do the next part I'm gonna show you, which is managing all the tables as much as we wanted. Um, so once you set that up, you know, you click next, it gets set up, and then you'll see you know, a link like here, okay? So when you click this link, you, when I click the link, you're gonna see all of the tables that are configured for me to pull down um, data. Uh, but at first, you're not gonna, you're, you're gonna choose the tables in the wizard that you just saw. Um, I would choose like one random table just to see that if you get, if you can get it working. Um, once you've successfully pulled down one random table, you can also click on manage tables and then all the tables that you can pull down, it takes a minute to, for this to show up. Um, all the tables that are available to pull down were, are uh, listed here. So you could filter it, right? So if you're looking for a specific inventory table or something, you can do it here. We're using Dynamics 365 FNO um, or FPNA or whatever they're calling it now. Um, if you click on that, this takes a minute to show up and then all of these objects appear. We're pulling down 160 of these objects, I believe, right now. A lot. We're pulling down a lot. Um, so yeah, you choose 
one of these objects here and just check it and then um, yeah, it'll start pulling it out. It takes, sometimes it takes like two hours to pull all the data the first time. So just be aware that the data won't be available to you for a while. You'll have to choose the table you want, click save, and then wait, and then the data will appear here. Um, also, not all of your tables will appear in this list. You actually have to change the schema in Dynamics for specific custom tables that you want available. There's some documentation on how to do that, and I will link it in the comments of the video so that that will help you out. You can find that out then. Um, a couple of things about this. So yeah, you choose these tables, you click save, you wait a couple hours, and then the data starts appearing. All right. So this is a list of all of the tables that I have pulled down, and you can see like they're sh showing me the row count. Um, and they're showing me a status. Active means that it's healthy. So if you're going to use Synapse Link, you're going to want to use this screen to monitor the status because sometimes they, things get gummed up. Although I'll tell you, I don't really know the remediation for what happens when things get gum up. I just end up going into Manage Tables, unchecking it, clicking Save, waiting 10 minutes or so, going back in, finding my table, checking it, and clicking save. And that seems to solve almost every problem. So I, I, I do that pretty regularly. Another thing that sometimes happens is the row counts will be wrong. And I don't know why this happens, but once in a while, um, when we go to like our UAT environment, one of our environments where we're dropping things into SQL Server so we can see the data in SQL Server, um, we notice that like it's it'll mi sometimes miss like 30,000 records or something. And I don't know why that happens, but when it does, um, I go in, remove it, add the table again, and then it works again. Now, I never really, I don't have to do that too often. I would say maybe once every month or two, we find a problem where it didn't pull all the records that we thought it should, and then we went in here, dropped it, recreated it, and then it worked. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to show you is what happens when the data comes down. I want to show you what it looks like in the Azure portal. So we're going to go into Storage Browser. First, I'm going to show you the Parquet format. So the way I do that is I go into my blob container, I go into my folder, and what you'll notice is I have, um, I have a folder here called Delta Lake, and here I have all the tables that I'm pulling down listed here, a ton of tables here. So when I go into one of these tables, like bomb calc group would be a good one, you're seeing a delta log and a partition ID. And then if you open up the partition, you'll see the actual parquet file, right? The reason why I wanted to show you this is this is Delta. This is the native Databricks format. So you'll see me do this a little bit later. When I go into Databricks, I don't have to like ingest this data. It's in the format necessary for Databricks to use. The only thing I have to do is just tell Databricks where the data is, effectively pointing it at this folder right here. And then boom, that table will come online and will be available for me. And it literally takes like a second. So the, the long part of getting data into Databricks is the data coming down from Synapse Link at whatever interval that it's going to come down in. And the easy part is actually getting it into Databricks, which happens almost instantly. So that's pretty cool. We're, we're very, very lucky that we get Delta format. Um, another thing that I wanted to share with you is this only works for Delta format. So if I go back to my blob containers and I look at um, well, actually, let me go back to home. In storage browser, in the blob container, um, same folder, there are two ways to drop data from Synapse Link. You can either drop data using Delta format, or you can drop data using CSV. Delta format lets you ingest it immediately. CSV you have to get the table definition, so like this prod table definition, and you have to like bring in the CSVs one at a time and actually run an ingestion script, which um, the other thing that is a little bit confusing about that is this model.json file is the actual table definition that you need to use to create the object from the CSV so that you know which columns are coming in 
and which data types to use, that will be listed in the model.json file. And then you'll have to actually write code to bring the CSV in and ingest it normally. Um, it's not as easy to just put a schema over the CSV and just have it automatically work. So um, I would recommend ingesting that instead. So the big question is, why would you use CSV if you could just use Delta Lake and not have to write the ingestion code? You know, you just put the schema over it and, it, and you're done. Why would you do that? Well, the answer is, let me go back to the CSV and I'll show you an idiot. Oh, let me go back to Synapse Link, the configuration screen that I showed you about earlier. And let me just show you a little bit of an idiosyncrasy. What happens with Delta Lake is you can only get the data dropping once per hour. So this this stuff is only going to come in once an hour. And you can kind of see these last synchronized dates like they, it doesn't come in with great uh, frequency. So you're only getting it. Yeah, I mean, 24 times a day. It's still pretty good. Not bad, right? Um, with CSV, you can get the data every 10 minutes. So when CSV lands, it lands only the changes and you get it really close to real time. Um, I know that there's a real time version of Synapse Link for Dynamics 365, but that only works for like Dynamics 365 objects. When I tried to do it with the FNO objects, it didn't work. I couldn't do it. It never worked. So um, I had to like for the stuff that I only want syncing once a day or once every hour, I use Delta format and for stuff that I want in closer to near real time, I use CSV format. So um, again, yeah, you get it at a lot greater frequency. And I think it's uh, it's good to do both, honestly. So I, I do both, and I think it's totally fine to do both. OK, so the last thing I wanted to share with you is what the code looks like. So let me go into Databricks. Let me just show you the, what the code looks like. The landing code, these are a list of tables that I bring in on this data pipeline, right? And all you're seeing is give me the path to the table name, which you saw that like BOM calc trans, you know, earlier, right? And then drop the table if it exists and just create the table using Delta and that location, right? So that's it. That's, you know, once you have the path, a create table statement using Delta, the right location, and you're done, boom, that Delta table is loaded. Um, if you are doing it, um, every 15 minutes uh, or every 10 minutes with um, with the CSV, it's just a regular data pipeline. You're creating the table schema, you know, creating the whole table schema. You could open up the model.json file and do it automatically, right? You don't need to hard code the table schema. You could parse the model.json file, create a schema, then ingest the CSVs just like normal. Okay. The last thing I wanted to do is share with you some idiosyncrasies about how the Dynamics data comes in. And it, it doesn't matter if it's Databricks or anything. It just it looks like this all the time. Um, one is the data comes in like a slowly changing dimension. So if you look at like an ID here, um, you're going to see multiple IDs um, because it's telling you how the record changed. So if you do your analytics directly on the Dynamics table, um, you're going to get duplicate results because every time the record changes, you're going to get another record. So what you do to counter that when you're in the table, if you want to get rid of everything that is a duplicate, is you go off a of version number. So in here, um, there's an ID that uniquely identifies that record. Um, actually, the rec ID uniquely identifies each record. And then there's a version number and the correct record is the one with the largest, the most recent version number. So there's the rec version, that would be helpful. Or I think there's just a straight version too, that, that would work too. So um, always get the last record. And what you might end up doing is in Dynamics, uh, you'll get all the files going down to Azure. You'll create a schema in Databricks called landing, which will be all the records and all the versions. And then you'll create another schema called raw, which is only the latest version of the record without all the history. That's assuming that for your analytic purposes, you don't care about the history. If you care about the history, then you need to create a slowly changing dimension 
like we always do. And I've got videos on that about how to create slowly changing dimensions and why they're cool and how they work. The last thing to note here is if a record gets deleted and you need to remove it out of your data structure because you don't want it for analytics because it's no good anymore, every table will have a column called is delete. And every column, if is delete is set to true, every column will be blanked out except the ID column. So what you do in your data structures is find all the IDs where is delete is set to true and then you know manually delete them and those will get all get out of the table and then you'll be uh, you'll be good to go and you'll have clean analytics so keep that in mind if you want good analytics make sure you get the most recent version of the row using um, rec version ID and if you want to get rid of the deleted records look for the is delete IDs and get those out of there and you should be good to go with uh, doing good dynamics analytics with Databricks using Synapse link and Dynamics 365, particularly Dynamics 365 FNO. Hopefully that helps you. Thanks. Have a great day.